Hey guys, welcome to Steven Tutorials. In this video we'll be learning a simple Photoshop technique which I like to call the color curve. This is what we'll be hoping to end with. So let's get started. I've got the original image open up on the side here, a uh, link to which will be included in the description box below. Firstly, let's get that a bit smaller. So image, image size, and then choose it to whatever you like. Press OK, and then let's unlock the background layer by double clicking and then simply pressing OK. Now it's a bit bright for my lighting so I'm just going to go to layer, layer style and go to color overlay. Set the blend mode to soft light and then choose a bit of a brown color. OK. Now that's done, we'll just create a new layer. And then, well, you can use the rectangular tool here, but I'm going to be using the custom shape tool on this occasion, and I'll be using this arrow shape here. Uh, if you can't see that, just click on the arrow there, and then just click on all. Right, now that we've got that selected, let's make something long and narrow. And that should be it. And then we'll just play around with a bit. So edit, transform path. Skew. Yeah. That's it. And then right click. And then rasterize the layer. Okay. Then just right click on the layer thumbnail. Select pixels. And then we'll go to edit defined brush preset and we'll just call that the color curve arrow. Now you can deselect that and we'll just get rid of that layer there and create a new one. Grab the brush tool and we'll just go to window brush or press F5 so we can change the settings of it. So let's just see the brush tip shape first. Make sure you have the brush which you want to uh, which you've just made selected, which is that there. And I'll have the spacing up to 1000%, perhaps a tad bit, uh, around 965, 917. Um, and we'll just keep the other settings the same. Go down to shape dynamics, size jitter around 20%, minimum diameter around 50, and we'll have the angle jitter at 0%, but with the pen tilt, rounding straight to 100. Control off and the minimum roundness as 1%. Scattering, we'll have that both axes, between around 30 35%, and control off, count round H10, and then count jitter as 0, with control off. Then click on the transfer, which may be known as other dynamics, dependent on which version of Photoshop you have. Click on opacity jitter first, that would be at 0, control is off, Flow jitter at 100% and control the pen pressure, minimum 0%. Then make sure you've got smoothing and wet edges ticked and selected. Okay, now we've done that. We'll just double click on layer 1 here and we're just going to add a bit of color. So gradient overlay. Click on the gradient here and we choose something called spectrum. Let's just get rid of a color here because we don't need two reds. So just click on it, drag it away, and let's just spread these out a bit. That's looking good. Press OK. Now we'll add a drop shadow. Put the blending mode to darken. The color is black and we'll put the opacity to 80. Then we'll have an angle around 120 ish. And the distance will be 0, but with a spread of 0 and a size of 1. And then we just go down to inner shadow. Blend mode will be multiplied, but the color this time will be white. Opacity will go straight up to 100, same angle, a distance of 1, choke of 0, and a size of 1. And I press OK. Now we're going to be using this layer type uh, another 2 or 3 times, so I suggest you select it and drag it down to the new layer button here, and do that 2 or 3 times. 
Now we've got our brush ready, click on layer 1 and let's just click 2 or 3 times and then for the next layer and again and once more a bit of variety there then I'm going to click on shift layer 1 so you've got them all selected and right click and just merge those layers now of course this doesn't really look like a color curve so we'll go to edit free transform and let's just rotate that around that way and stretch it out it's a bit wide as well we'll get that a bit more narrow and there you go let's apply that transformation now there's still no curve in that so we'll go to edit transform warp and just zoom out a bit there and just play around with these dots on the edges here to sort of make the curve happen You can of course play with the actual thing in the middle there as well. And that should do for now, so we're just going to apply the transformation. Let's zoom back in. Now she's obviously behind the color curve, so we've got to fix that. We'll just zoom in a bit. Her, and what we'll do is we'll just hide that layer there by clicking the eye and we'll get out the magnetic lasso tool uh, you can use a polygon or the lasso tool itself it just depends on how much time you have or if you really want use the pen tool to cut her out so just click and then start going around I'll try and do this as quick as possible Halfway there, you might have a bit of chopped hand here, but oh well. Yeah, now that's selected. We'll click back onto that layer there, and then we'll go to layer, layer mask, and hide selection. Now, as you can see, she is now in front of it. Just zoom out a bit, get the full effect of that. Now we're not quite done yet. Firstly, let's make a new layer and click on the brush tool. We'll pick up a nice soft brush but for a much smaller size around 280 we'll do in this instance and we'll be choosing the color white and before you do that just right click on layer 1 and create clipping mask then just click on one side of the curve where the curve is mainly click once go to the other side hold on to the shift key and click again make a new layer again create clipping mask this time we want the color black 
we'll keep it to around the same brush size and with the other curve so click on one side go to the other click on hold on to shift and then click the other side and uh, we'll just be changing the blending modes here so for layer 2 let's try overlay and then for layer 1 we'll also try overlay so you can see it's added a tiny bit more depth so that's how it was before and after now we're nearly done another couple of things to do so we'll just create a new layer go to your paint bucket tool and let's fill in the whole thing with white and go to filter noise we'll add a few dust and scratches in and three pixels then let's press OK and set that to soft light with our own opacity 13% okay add a new layer do the same thing again so I've already got my paint bucket selected for the end with white filter noise and we'll actually add some noise this time right around yep 12.5% so it looks good and how that is uniform press OK and let's put that soft light as well and that should be around 20% then one last layer, but this time we're going to go to, we shall go to image, apply image, just press OK, and then we'll be going to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and we'll just have a radius around, let's say 2.4, press OK, set that to soft light, and just put that around 78%. And there we have it. Hope you learned something new from this. Remember to hit that subscribe button so you're the first to know when the next weekly tutorial is up.